Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. East Palestine resident living 900 feet from the derailment. Uh, that's where the rail cars actually are, is in your backyard, as I understand it. Uh, yeah. Hey, the, the, the EPA uh, says nothing to worry about. Uh, Norfolk Southern says they're cleaning everything up. Uh, tell me just what it's like there. What's it smell like? How do you feel being in your house? Uh, what's the drinking water like? Um, we have not drank the water. We're strictly water bottles. We're not even going to uh, risk it. Um, the smell, you can't smell it during the day, but at nighttime, you really smell it. What's it um, smell it, like? It's it's kind of like paint thinner. Like it's, it's like a sweet smell, but it's so bad that you can taste it. Wow. Um, it's, it's horrible. Look, there was about a week that nobody really cared about this story. Uh, nobody Absolutely. really, r really did much about it, uh, except for News Nation. We were there. One of our reporters got arrested covering on it. But put, put that aside. Now that there's national attention on this, do you have any hope that things are going to be okay? I don't think so. We're, we don't feel safe here. Um, we Do you have, think anybody cares? I, I don't think so. <laughs> Are you ready? everybody, it's Jeff. I'm uh, glad you're here. Um, well, uh, it's been kind of a, you know, a, a weird, uh, weird day here for me. I mean, and the weather kind of facilitates that too. We, <laughs> we had like rain, then it stopped. Then the clouds started to break, and then they came back together, and it's like <laughs> it's like we were going through all every phase of weather you could think, you know, <laughs> in just one day. Um, uh, but it wasn't really cold out today, so it was really really nice, and uh, the rain helped to get rid of a lot of the snow and ice, uh, which you know I don't know if I said I had fallen on uh, a week back, I guess, and skinned my knee pretty bad, uh, falling on it. Um, but uh, you know it's uh, it's hard because you know see the walkway out front here kind of goes down in a slope into the parking lot. That's where the dan danger is because if that gets all wet and that freezes overnight, that's all a sheet of ice. And you know uh, you kind of have to uh, you know throw salt there, but sometimes you know even that's not enough, and, and the water comes back and then it freezes. So anyway. Now that we've had some rain, uh, that's all cleared now and there's no ice there. So whenever, however long that'll be, uh, hopefully it won't, the snow and ice won't come back there. Um, so anyway, uh, this there's been a lot of talk this week about the, uh, the train that derailed in Ohio, okay? And the huge friggin' mess that that's made in, in, the, in the town there, is it uh, East Palestine? Uh, the huge mess that it made in that town, uh, and you know, yeah, people have a, a you know, I, I guess I'd be pissed too because you know they uh, they ruined. Uh, oh, hold on a second here. <laughs> okay, I'm just looking for my glasses here. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'd be mad too because you know that 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 stuff is toxic that got dumped out on the friggin' uh, road and on the streets and everything in the neighborhood and you know it's well let me let me put it like this <coughs> it's not the first time this has happened okay we get 
train derailments almost uh, maybe once or twice a year, it seems. And, you know, every time it happens, people say, well, aren't these companies taking care of the trains? Are they, or are these the train drivers, uh, you know, drunk or something, you know? Um, and what I, you know, kind of found out today uh, by reading and, and, you know, listening to other people's com or reading other people's comments is that it's really the uh, the company that's at fault because what they're trying to do is maximize profits like every other company in America is, is so uh, fabulous at putting at doing for themselves and putting everything on the back burner like safety and and, and, and the uh, pay of the workers and the benefits and stuff all in the effort to raise up the value of their companies in which they take the profits they make and they buy their own stocks back. Therefore, you know, creating a cycle of constantly ramping up the, the value of their company. Uh, which, you know, in my opinion is like, well, you're basically saying how how f high up is up. I mean, I mean, you just, you know, where's the limit to these people's greed? There isn't any. It doesn't seem like there is any, right? And, and how much can you inflate a company before something happens and a crash occurs that could devastate how many Americans? I, you know, I just, I feel like it's, it's a stupid thing to do, okay? Um, but as it is, that's where we're, that's where these companies are at, I think. And, uh, when they get all this money and they don't use it to update their trains to, you know, uh, uh, do maintenance and repairs on the railways, uh, and to hire more workers because apparently there's a, a huge shortage of workers for these railroad companies. Um, so much so that they can't afford to have any of these people take time off. Okay. So if you work for a railroad company, you're going to be working long hours. And if you get sick, you're still going to have to work because they're not going to, they're not going to cover, you know, cover your back if you have to stay home. Um, and the, a lot of these guys show up to work sick anyway. Okay. And so, it's really a sad situation where you you have to say, look, how long are these workers going to put up with this before something happens where they say, look, we're, we're going to go on strike or we're all going to quit. But they're one way or the other, they're going to have to listen to us, okay, because they, they can't run, the, the country cannot function without the without the, the, co the functionality of the train system. We, we, caught, we move a lot of merchandise and cargo from one point to another and they're essential so when you treat something as essential as the railroad company like shit okay uh you know how how are these people going to be able to to maintain this incredible responsibility that they put on these shoulders of these people uh and work. I mean, look, if, if they want people that are like fucking androids, why don't they just take the trains that they have and automate them or something? You know what I'm saying? If they don't want to deal with people getting sick and they don't want to deal with people having, you know, uh, you know, coverage for family issues or whatever the hell you can come up with that people get covered for in a work environment, if they don't want to deal with that anymore and they're just looking at profit, then why don't they take some of that profit and take all the trains they got and computerize them, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Turn them into to rolling robots, okay? That way they don't have to deal with people anymore, okay? And, and, and uh, the trains will just do what they got to do. But something tells me that, you know, even that idea wouldn't work with them because they'd have to spend money on computerization of all the trains, They'd have to actually have people checking these things out uh, periodically to make sure that they're still able to, to go down the rails without derailing. <laughs> you know, uh, there, it might open the door to more derailment or more accidents with the trains because, uh, from what I understand, the scheduling of the trains is very precise uh, in order to avoid collisions and stuff like that. Uh, would that be able, would that be something that's a uh, could be done with computerization uh, to guarantee that the uh, collisions don't happen. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, if these people actually gave a shit about the jobs that they're trying to make so much money on, then they would maximize efficiency uh, 
to their, to, you know, to the highest part. I mean, so certainly that in itself would make these companies more valuable that they have that kind of a record where uh, they don't need people and the, the trains are, you know, are basically rolling robots, okay? And they just do all this stuff uh, from taking stuff from point A to point B and they don't ever have any collisions. I mean, wouldn't that make a company worth more? I mean, because of their track record? I mean, you know, uh, not you know, to use a pun here, but you know, I'm just saying, wouldn't that make it, you know, more desirable to put, invest in a company like that, to buy stock in a company like that, um, instead of what they're doing and how they're doing it now, okay? Because right now, their trains are neglected. Okay, I've been saying this for a while that, you know, the trains we use in this country are old compared to the rest of the world and what they use. Okay, um, and it's, it's showing all the time. These trains are being pushed past the limit. Okay, and a, a bearing goes in an axle. And before you know it, that train is flying over the rooftops of uh, rooftops of people's homes. Um, and then you got toxic chemicals right behind it, you know. Uh, washing all the houses out. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's just ridiculous. And it takes forever to clean that up. And it never really is clean, even after they do. Because that gets into the groundwater. And I mean, it's just, it's a fucking mess. People will get sick from that. And then they'll be suing the company. I mean, why would they want to deal with that? You know, why would they want to open themselves up to, to shit like that? So, you know, I, I feel like, you know, this this is a problem, like the gun problem, <laughs> uh, where it's gone on too long and it should be it should have been taken care of a long time ago. And this should be an easier thing to, to deal with than the gun issue, since nobody wants to do any damn thing about the 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 numerous guns that people have on the streets. But you know, this we're not talking about the Second Amendment here. We're just talking about safety. Alright? And and the rights of workers. Instead of getting rid of workers, why don't they just hire more? I mean, I mean, it just if the the solution is here is very simple, uh, just to to at least reduce in in frequency, and uh, they could hire more workers, you know, give them more time off when they need it. Okay, uh, that would put less stress on the uh, on the industry. Uh, and, you know, they could, uh, you know, get some new trains, okay? <laughs> Buy some new friggin' uh, engines or something. And, and and if you're still using boxcars that are like 60 years old, get rid of the goddamn things. Especially if you haven't taken them off the track in, in a long, long time to check to make sure that everything is not rusted through. And You know, check these damn things out, okay? I mean, do something. You know, earn your fucking money. Don't just sit there in your office and rake in money and uh, go to and spend it on Wall Street buying your own stock. I mean, do something with that money that builds up your company more. Okay? You got to have a good foundation in any company to make it big. And if your foundation is rotting <laughs> like Alcatraz, <laughs> okay, guess what happens? It gets closed up just like Alcatraz did. So um, unless you're trying to do that, unless you're trying to self-destruct your own company, Okay, you're going to have to put spend some money on your company to keep it afloat. Okay, it's got it's a simple even to the small small businesses out there understand this fact. Okay, you can't run a business and never invest anything in it and expect money to keep rolling in all the time. Okay, no, 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 that's not how it works. Okay, you still make your profits, but you got to take some of that profit and put it back into your company. To keep it going, to keep it uh, livable, to keep it functioning, you know, at its peak. You don't want somebody else with a newer company coming around and out and overshadowing you because they're they you know they can do more or they you know they're more responsible. You want to be on the ball. You want to be able to stay ahead of the ball. Actually, <laughs> you want to be able to stay ahead of the ball so that way you don't get left behind. And you know, it would seem like a logical thing to do. Okay. Um. And uh, you know they uh, let me see here. The, this I have this article here, and I haven't. I'm not reading it. <laughs> okay. Um, there's this article from the New York Times that was published today, uh, and 
it says uh, the titles in Ohio town where train derailed anxiety and distrust are running deep uh, two weeks after a train carrying toxic chemicals derailed in East Palestine Ohio confusing messages from government officials have frayed locals trust uh, all around the once thriving industrial town in the quiet hills of eastern Ohio there were signs this week of business as usual schools were in session restaurants were serving lunch and trains were again barreling along the tracks that cross Market Street but all around too were signs that nothing was normal at all people sniffed the water coming out of their taps checked rashes in the mirror and gazed down into creeks at the green white shoals of fish and frogs floating belly up the smell lingered reminding some of a tire fire others of burning plastic mixed with model airplane glue or nail polish remover nearly two weeks after a norfolk southern freight train derailed in east palestine and a controlled burn of toxic chemicals it was carrying force uh, carrying forced hundreds of residents to uh, evacuate the area for days the normal for many here was dread uh, quote it's always kind of been a comforting sound unquote tracy masher who is raising three of her grandchildren in the town said of the wail of the trains as they rattled through uh, quote and now it's a horrifying sound unquote as dusk fell on tuesday she and her husband greg took their granddaughters to a park so they could sit on a bench and think other families were sending their children back to school this week but the masher's girl had broken out in rashes in recent days and they wondered what ch what dangers in their health might linger throughout the town neighbors were returning to their homes but they had seen firsthand the monstrous plume over the rooftops and had not spent a night at home since uh, the mashers had been in east palestine for three generations and mr masher 61 now spoke of it like a foreign land quote i'm lost he said totally lost unquote perhaps the most frightening thing for the town's roughly 4,700 residents is how much remains unknown and whether dangers that may be addressed in the short term will pose a threat years down the line experts have warned that understanding the causes and consequences could require a more comprehensive investigation than what has taken place so far uh, confusing and seemingly shifting messages from government and railroad officials have frayed the local trust which was already thin in a town battered by decades of mill and plant closures rumors and suspicions about the incident are swirling on Facebook and TikTok accounts all over the country around town they are also uh, being traded among neighbors and backyards and through the open windows of pickup trucks the tension is likely to rise on Wednesday evening in the East Palestine High School gym where the town has scheduled an informational open house hours before the meeting which was initially billed as a town hall Norfolk Southern announced it would not attend with a spokesman saying that quote we have become increasingly concerned about the growing physical threat to our employees and members of the community around this event stemming from the increasing likelihood of the participation of outside parties unquote the company did not provide any additional details on the nature or origin of those threats while some grumbled that the new format and absence of railroad officials made the open house seem like a waste of time a line of people had already formed at the gym door more than a half an hour before the event stretching down the block and across several streets at a news conference on tuesday state officials recommended that people in the area use bottled water particularly if they rely on a private well a day later the ohio environmental protection agency said it was quote confident that the municipal water is safe to drink unquote after a series of tests did not show contaminants but encouraged those with private wells to test their water part of the train and its cargo of hazardous chemicals initially ran off the tracks on the night of february the third leaving a fiery frightening jumble of about 50 cars parts of east palestine were forced to evacuate within three days of the derailment when state officials agreed to the company's request to initially burn some of the chemicals to defuse the threat of an explosion that could have sent shrapnel and toxic fumes flying uh, chemicals on board included vinyl chloride 
uh, a colorless flammable gas that can cause headaches, dizziness, and after being inhaled uh, and potentially after sustained exposure, a rare form of liver cancer. Uh, yeah, they got some pretty horrific pictures here with this article of the mess that was made. Jesus Christ. Let me, let me see if I can't get that up here. This is, these are all train cars. Okay. Look how rusted they are, but that's probably from the burning. You can scroll up. Here's the, the big fl plume here of, of smoke that they saw from the wreck. I mean, that's scary. Of course, that looks like a volcano eruption, right? Let me go back up here. Yeah, see, I mean, this is it's a, a town looks a lot like a town you'd find right here in Maine, okay? You know, see, here's a creek. They had to put stuff there to, to catch the chemicals. This is roped off because it's probably contaminated. See, this is the, you know, probably some shit in that water here. But, uh, that looks like a train car, it might not be, but it looks like one. Let me go back down here. There's one of the emergency centers here that they set up. dead fish or a dead frog, I don't know, but see the water is already polluted here in some parts. Uh, dead fish in Leslie Run, a small stream south of downtown. So yeah, you got, and there's another dead one over there. So the water, you can't touch that. Uh, okay, so yeah, pretty bad. Pretty I said, you know, before, I mean, this this is a situation that could have been avoided if they'd have just done their job, you know? That's all they had to do was is to maintain the trains, the tracks, uh, you know, spend some of that damn profit back into your company so that way things like this won't happen. Because, you know, this has to cost them money, right? I mean, don't these towns sue the train company if they find out it was their fault that the train derailed? I mean, they just said that a bad uh, uh, bearing in an axle is what caused it. It just broke and the damn thing derailed. I mean, that shouldn't be happening. Trains, considering the damage they can do to the environment, they should be regulated like the airline industry. I mean, you know what I'm saying? They shouldn't, I mean, airplanes are, are important things too and everything has to function perfectly in an airplane, right? Um, and so why not the same kind of strict attention given to trains themselves because you know with considering all that they carry from one point to another a derailment can be disastrous like it is here you know it can actually destroy a small town you know depending on what they're carrying you know it's just you know ignorance about what these trains actually provide to this country is what keeps things like this continuing to happen and uh, I think there's not enough widespread knowledge about what the trains you know why these trains have to be regulated or somehow by the government to make sure they the companies maintain a standard okay and so you know there needs to be some sort of effort given to the public at large uh, not just in the small towns near the tracks but everybody why these trains are being neglected and how we can reverse that Okay, because um, you can certainly hold the CEOs of all these uh, rail companies responsible for any time one of their trains has an accident like this, you know, especially if it's their fault. Okay, so I just, I feel like, hey, you know, <laughs> uh, now's the time to do it because we, you know, how much more of the shit can our environment take uh, before, you know, it, no, there's no safe place. I mean, what are we going to have to do? Take all the towns away from the damn tracks or something? We're going to have to shut down every town. I mean, that would be like shutting VZ down because I live like 
uh, like half of a mile from the tracks here, or it's even closer than that actually, but uh, you know, I'm just, I'm right there. I'm right on a track, but the trains don't go fast here because there's a speed limit of the train as they get into a town, okay? But still, I mean, I'm near a track. They'd have to shut down all of Bangor, VZ, Old Town, Orno, because they, their, their, their towns sit on the tracks, okay? And they'd all be, you know, if any train derailed, I mean, they could take out two, two of the towns because they're like back to back to back all the way up, you know? Uh, so, you I mean, you just, you know, you, you have to think of that. When you, it's like a plane that's flying through a city. Do you want that fucking plane to crash <laughs> in, in the middle of New York City when it's flying, you know, down over a city? Of course not. You want to make sure that plane is, you know, in great condition and, you know, there's no danger that there's the thing is going to fall apart in the sky, right? Well, the, I mean, the devastation a train can do in a derailment is twice, three times that of what an airplane will, will create for damage, depending on where it lands or crashes. Okay, so we ought to be really strict on the trains themselves. You know, most of the time planes aren't carrying toxic chemicals over the air. <laughs> okay, uh, but they can, uh, when they crash, leave toxic uh, fuel on the ground from the from the jet engine. So you know what I'm saying? We have to treat both as the same. You know, the industry is both have to be regulated and watched uh, vigilantly. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's have a commercial break. We'll be right back. This is me. This is me. I'm Alex Curtis, I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins, I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Tell me uh, how much how much COVID cash went to CRT? CRT. Critical race theory in education. It's it's a racist uh, uh, curriculum used to teach children uh, that somehow their white skin is not equal to black skin and other things in education. No, uh, no I do not know that, but I, I do know that there's f provisions that the uh, federal funds generally are not used. They're supposed to be used for curriculum. Oh, that it's a state. Oh, Mr. Dodaro, I have to tell you, in Illinois, that they, they received 5.1 billion um, at school there that that used it for equity and diversity. Um, so it's it's being used for these things. Uh, Mr. Dodaro, can you tell me how much money was given to Drag Queen Story Hour? <laughs> Repeat it. Drag queen story time, where where men dress up as oh, oh, women and, and read confusing books to children. First, I thought you said drag queen. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I don't know the answer to either one of those two. Uh, oh, we need to look into this, and I, I urge you to do that. Um, they, uh, Bradbury Sullivan LGBT Community Center in Pennsylvania received sixteen thousand uh, dollars for drag queen story time uh, from from COVID cash. Um, I think this is an issue that needs to be looked into. A lot of this money went to things that should have never gone to. And I thank you so much, and I yield. Well, I don't really concern because I can swim, so it's no big deal. It's, more, it's just a safety thing in case there's like something like an emergency happens, you know. Hello, I'm James Whittingham for Rely on Our Garments. Many of you with bladder control problems are embarrassed about wetting yourself in public because you're afraid that your adult diaper might leak. Well, I'm here to tell you about Rely. Rely offers you the assurance of a toilet without the obvious bulk that many adult diapers have. Now, don't get me wrong. 
I don't have a bladder control problem. I'm a successful actor comedian, and I'm above that sort of disgustiness. But unlike other people with bladder control problems, I'm just lazy. I don't like to stop my active day to go pee. I'm not gonna lie to you. I like to eat, and as a big eater, I can spend 40, even 50 minutes going to the bathroom each day. With Rely, I have a whole new freedom that I never had before. But don't just listen to me. Here's what other regular people, just like you, have to say about Rely. Oh, it's just a hassle. You just put it on, they don't bug you. I think it's very important. You never can tell what's going to happen to you when you're out in the boat. Always everything. Get the ones with the little muppets on them. It hasn't affected me at all. No, okay. After that summer three years ago, there's nothing yeah. to do with us anymore. So there you have it. If you're looking for complete bladder protection, Rely's got you covered. Holy fuck. Were you just checking out her ass? No, I wasn't. You know what? Fuck this. Wait, babe, calm down. Oh my god. Mary! I am sorry! Donald Trump is back, angry, vengeful, ready to take back the White House and wreck America again. And who's going to stop it? These weaklings and losers, business leaders, they'll bend the knee and write the checks. The press? Too many are just here for the show, ready to both sides America to death. The law? He'll ignore it, like he's always done. No. The only people who will stop Trump are Americans ready to put country over party, ready to put differences aside to save this country, ready to work, ready to fight, ready to stand up when he knocks America down. Because it's not about left and right. It's not about rich and poor, black or white. Like it's always been, the choice is simple. It's America or Trump. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I love the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now, appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th.
right, everybody. Well, so I'll just start here the second segment here with this uh, rather scary kind of situation that's happened to a man in Oklahoma uh, at a Starbucks. <laughs> um, he was overcharged uh, $4,000 uh, for what he ordered was a, a, a venti iced Americano and a venti caramel frappuccino with an espresso shot. Okay. And somehow, uh, Okay, that the the, um, the iced americano was three dollars and ninety five cents. The caramel frap was five dollars and ninety five cents, and the single espresso shot was an extra dollar, which brought that to ten dollars and ninety cents. Uh, there was a gratuity, eight point five one seven percent food and beverage tax, ninety three cents, and the gratuity was four thousand. Four hundred forty-four dollars and forty-four cents, all fours. Okay, that brought the total up to four thousand four hundred and fifty-six dollars and twenty-seven cents. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, he said he didn't place a tip on his order. Okay, he's he's certain of that. Uh, and they reached out to Starbucks and was informed uh, by the area director that uh, a network issue or a sticky button was to blame for the outlandish tip. Uh, Starbucks sent along two reimbursement checks, but in a bizarre turn of events, the checks he received bounced. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, he had to postpone his trip to Thailand due to this financial mess. Uh, the guy says he's not looking for a fucking apology. Uh, he just wants his money back, or you know, it's just <laughs> um, and he said uh, a quote. Uh, I'm not looking for any public apology. I wouldn't expect it if I had to wait a month to get my own money back. So in something like that, I think Starbucks just needs to have a little bit of respect and look back on how they want to deal with customers in the future. Um, so I don't know that that was where the story kind of ends and they haven't said anything about whether they're going to write him new checks or what the hell they're going to do to give him his money back. But how the hell does somebody... Uh, get f all fours on the gratuity, which he said he didn't put any gratuity in there at all, but somehow that number, uh, 4444 four, four, four and 44 cents, shows up on the ticket, on the receipt rather. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I've, I've never heard of a, of a, a problem like that happening uh, where they said that, uh, you know, it was a, um, a sticky a sticky button, a network issue, or a sticky button, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know, they don't, they don't use buttons anymore, right, on registers, it's all touch screen stuff, I mean, you think that's what, you know, I don't know, I, I, it seems to me like, you know, when you hear somebody talk about buttons, it's like, well, we're not in the 80s or the 90s anymore, this is the 21st century, most people, the registers are touch screen, uh, uh, you know, touch screen uh, controls, um, so, a network issue? Why? Why would there be a network issue? These these things are, are connected online somehow. You know, I, I don't know. It's I, <laughs> I don't really understand how stores like that do their business these days with all this new technology they got. But um, all I know was that th this was weird when I saw that happen. And you know, the guy is kind of pissed because he was planning on going to another country, and now he can't because of Starbucks. So I'm hoping that, you know, Starbucks can get this cleared up here and, um, I don't know. I'd like to see how they can explain what happened here because it's kind of scary when you think about it. Um, so. This happened today in Tucson, Arizona.
a truck spilled toxic nitric acid after a crash on the highway in Arizona. So yet more environmental damage due to vehicles transporting, you know, toxic chemicals down the streets and roads and railways of America here. Um, and of course, you know, that smoke coming out of that shit is, is, is dangerous to be even be around. In fact, they just show people wearing chemical suits, uh, you know, while they're trying to clean up the mess. Um, so, you know, I have to want, you know, why, why would they, why would they trust? Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference, right? I mean, I was going to say, why would they trust trucks to, to do this stuff? Um, but yet they'll, uh, they'll turn on turn around and just uh, use uh you know trains that are that are gonna derail and spill the stuff anyway right so what the hell <laughs> it just it, i don't know you know it seems like the more we try to clean up the environment it's like the worst kind of accidents have been happening around the country you know do you, you feel like that i mean it's like I've never seen so many oil leaks coming from the pipelines, so many trucks rolling over with deadly results, um, and trains derailing in a time when we're trying to do everything we can to clean up the environment, you know, to make these, to make our, you know, quality of life cleaner and safer, but we can't do it because, you know, it seems like the, the, the corporations of America have doubled down on just wrecking everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, without their cooperation, how far do you think we can get uh, in America when it comes to cleaning the environment? I mean, because whenever they make a mistake, we're not talking about small dollars in damage here. We're talking about massive damage that could, you know, uh, have fallout for years and years to come. Okay? And yet... You know, they just, uh, you know, they're always resistant to, you know, talking about what they can do to chip in to help out clean the environment because they're always the ones making the most damage in it, you know. Despite what they say about a, about a person's uh, carbon footprint, that's nothing compared to the kind of shit that corporations have done to the planet all by themselves, okay. I mean, if you take all the factories, plants, uh, you know, power plants and all the stuff that creates toxic waste, and you just snap your finger and it all disappear, we could actually clean up the environment a whole lot faster if they weren't around. <laughs> okay? But every day, these fucking people are out there damaging the environment in some goddamn way, and, and yet we're responsible. You know, it's it's up to the consumer to take all the all the damage, to do all the work to clean up the environment. You know? When do they get... When, when are the corporations going to chip in and help? So, I just feel like every time this happens, it sets us back, you know, and we end up having to deal with more uh, dangerous zones in our country that are just still toxic and still, you know, you can't be around, okay? That doesn't look good. You know, and to put icing on the cake here, as it is, about an hour ago, a goddamn Black Hawk helicopter uh, crashed near an Alabama highway. Uh, and the chopper, what, it belonged to the Tennessee National Guard. It was on a training mission. And it just, somebody actually got it on, on uh, recorded it as it was coming down. You know, I mean, you can't do an uh, accident today without somebody having a phone or, you know, with a camera on it. Uh, it happened at about 3 o'clock, so that was, you know, about five hours ago. And uh, it's, it crashed off Highway 53 in Madison County. Hell of a fucking mess, okay? It got fire here. It's, you know, they're showing images here of it. It looks like it landed on, on a car. I don't think anybody was in it. It looked like it was parked, but... Um, it burned on impact. Uh, the cell phone video it showed that a, a plume of black smoke was uh, rising hundreds of feet into the air on the side of the highway after it crashed. Um, nobody survived it. 
Uh, they're not saying how many people were aboard it yet. Um, but again, another example of what I'm talking about today about, you know, uh, things, you know, blowing up and falling down and everything around people in this country and, you know, leaving devastation behind. Uh, you know, it's just uh, like, a, you know, like we we're trying to, we're trying to restore our environment and everything uh, besides, you know, you know, invaders from another planet are basically undoing, as we are doing, repairs to our world, <laughs> okay? Uh, there's got to be, there has to be something done about safety and accountability here for things that people are using to, either for the military or for trains or trucks, you know what I'm saying? There has to be more investment in these things to bring them up to par with with the way the rest of the world is doing their things okay i mean you don't hear as much about this in other world uh, other countries as you do in this country um i mean it's good it's like america's going to turn into this big quagmire of friggin toxicity okay uh sort of a uh, fuck you to the native americans who lived here we, we've taken your your land and now we're going to destroy it over time okay uh, you know, I, I'd like to see the Native Americans try to do something, you know, to protest all this because all the land that they once uh, had under their, you know, under their care uh, is basically all been destroyed, okay? Uh, no matter what kind of care uh, we tried doing for it, it always blew up in our face by somebody in a company or something like that trying to destroy it, okay? Uh, you know, like trying to put build a fucking pipeline uh, from Canada all the way down to Louisiana or Illinois, wherever, you know, to transport oil, you know, from the tar sands, okay? Um, and they're saying, oh, the, it's it's going to be safe. You know, the pipeline's not going to leak. And yet we had one of the pipelines, uh, an older one, uh, burst here, was it uh, last year or December or something like that, uh, and spilled oil all over the fucking area. Okay, they didn't talk much about that on the news, of course, but it happened, and it just it just highlighted the point why we didn't want that big pipeline built from Canada all the way down there. And they're saying that they didn't, they haven't tore down that beginning of that pipeline. They're still standing by for when that's greenlit, so they're going to start building on it whenever they say go ahead and do it. So, you know, <laughs> that's the arrogance of of corporate of corporations is that when they want something. Uh, if you say no the first time, they're still going to stand in front of you and wait for that yes. Okay, they're not going to stop. They're not tearing down where they where they started beginning that pipeline. And so whenever the whenever the time is right and they get the right people in office in this country to say go ahead and build your fucking pipeline, it's going to start. It's going to start. So you know that's the way that's the way these companies work. Okay, and. Because, hey, if there's money to be made by Jesus, they're going to do whatever they can do to get that money. Even if they have to plow through somebody's home uh, to get that pipeline built, they'll do it. Okay? We've done that before to people in this country in the past. Uh, and uh, we're not, uh, we're not uh, you know, unlikely to do that in the future. So, but, you know, this is what we got to deal with in today's world. You know, it's like, you know, everything that we try to do keeps slipping out of our hands and gets uh, thrown back at us. Like, it, it's not meant to happen. It's not meant to work. Like, cleaning up the environment is something we, we're not going to be able to do because something is always working against us all the time uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. So, the future of the world is going to be bleak, you know, and... We're all, most of us are going to see the beginnings of just how bad things are going to get as time goes on. And, you know, we're going to be real, real sorry. I don't know about the corporations. I don't know if they're going to be sorry. I think they're just going to say, oh, so what? Um, but the rest of us are going to be very sorry when we find our, our livelihoods upended, you know, and we start seeing new homeless people who lost everything uh, due to environmental disasters or something like that uh when you start to see florida become uh, an ocean <laughs> you know where you know and uh 
we start to see a lot of, a lot of uh, you know big storms washing away neighborhoods and stuff that are built up near the shoreline which hey anybody looking to build a house on the shore of florida you people deserve to get every damn thing you get from that because you've been warned you've been fucking warned okay about what's going to happen to that state in in a very short time so whatever you build there is going to get washed out so i hope you don't have to live long but i'm telling you right now you're wasting your money if you're if you're young if you're like in your 20s and you're building a house there <laughs> I hope you got flood insurance, but from what I understand, all the insurance companies have left Florida for, for the most part, and nobody wants to insure homes down there for flood damage. Nobody. So you're going to be very hard to find any insurance that's going to cover damage due to a flood. Okay? Um, and your governor down there doesn't give a shit about that either. He's not going to help you with that, uh, with that problem. So you people in Florida need to wake up and understand you've been warned. All right. And that goes for anybody in any state that lives on, that has <coughs> communities along the East Coast and the West Coast and along the Gulf. Uh, storms are going to be very bad. All right. Uh, and homes are going to get washed away. And if you're spending a lot of money on a home on the, on the ocean front there, I mean... Like I said, you know, insurance companies are wising up to that now, okay? And it's going to be harder as time goes on to get flood insurance. So you better have emergency money tucked away somewhere for eventualities like that because they will happen. It's not an if, it's a when. And it's going to happen. So I'm just hoping that people will smarten up and just stop building along the, uh, along the waterfronts because it's not a good spot. New York City... I mean, I flew over that city, and it looks like it's sitting on the water. It does. I mean, from the air, the land and the water are just about even. <laughs> okay, so it looks like it looks like the whole city is sitting on water. You know, it wouldn't take a whole lot to do serious damage to New York City. You know, their debt time is coming fast for them. Okay, they've already had some some big storms go through there already, and and you saw the floodwaters. Okay, and what that did to the subways and shit like that. Okay, it's already going to happen, you know, and I, I just, I hope uh, that uh, either people will back out of the area or that some, whoever the governor is, will invest in putting some kind of barrier between the ocean and the city, if they can. All right, it might be too late now to start working on something like that. It might be too fucking late. Okay, I don't know. But all I can say is that if you're not going to build a barrier between the city and the water, then the city has got to go. You're going to have to evacuate that city beforehand. I don't know what you're going to do about it, but they have the people have to get to higher ground. Okay, and New York City, the, the Long Island, that's not high enough ground. I'm sorry to say. So that city is going to be like Venice <laughs> in a short time where people are going to have to use boats to get around in the you know in between the buildings okay forget your your uh uh central park and all that that's all going to be underwater okay and your subways well that's all going to be underwater <laughs> okay so you know you're gonna the people in that city uh if the mayor of the city was in his bright mind taxes would go through the roof in there as they try to get money to uh prepare the infrastructure of the city for that eventuality because it is going to happen all right it is going to happen so those of you down there in that part of the world need to think about backing out of that area too taking all your businesses out of there bringing them further inland okay uh and just you know i don't know what you do with a city like as big as that leaving it there to rot or are you <laughs> what do you do with it um i don't know it's 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 sad because all the all the hours the man hours and, and years it took to build that city uh and to find out that its future is going to be underwater <laughs> you know it's like you know why if people knew this way back when the, the when the people first started uh colonizing in that area if they knew that would they have built the city there on that island you know if they'd have known that someday down the road all your work is going to get washed into the sea would they have still built the city the way they did, you know, right where it is? I don't think I, I don't think they would have. 
I think because they would have wanted the city to last, they would have built it further inland. And I think that, you know, when the World Trade Towers came down, uh, they shouldn't have built anything there in, in the spot of it because of the fact that, hey, look, scientists are already saying the global warming is going to bring the water right up into the damn front doors of a lot of these buildings. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to build anything there to replace what what we lost on September 11. I think we should just leave it uh, and build another World Trade Center further inland, okay, away from the waterfront. Uh, I think that's what they should have done instead of building what they the memorial building or whatever they call it uh, where it is now. I mean, I think it was just a waste of time and money uh, for these people to put such a you know uh, pretty building there where you know where it's obviously going to get ruined in time. Um, so I don't know. It's like I said, build a wall or evacuate now while you can, while the people are still alive and not drowning. You know. Uh, but it just seems like, uh, you know, like I said, the companies are just doing everything they can to screw this all up uh, for our planet. And uh, Joe, uh, George Santos here, the, the, the chief liar here of everything. <laughs> um, at first he was saying he wasn't going to run for, a, for another term for the seat, okay? Uh, which Republicans were kind of happy he said that, but now he's changing his mind. Now he says he wants to run for re-election. Uh, and the Republicans aren't really happy about that. Despite what, they're, what they tell the reporters and stuff like that, the GOP is not really happy with him. Okay, They really don't like him uh, because he's every, he represents everything they hate uh, you know, about the people uh, that you know, they can't stand. Okay, I mean, he's... <laughs> Uh, and I think he was the last person they ever would have wanted to win a seat, but because he has a re he was a Republican, uh, they needed that seat to fall in Republican hands. So they had to they had to suck it up and let him win. Um, but they want him out. I mean, because they the more they investigate in this guy, the more stuff they're finding out about him that's put him under investigation for ethics violations and he's under uh, he's being hit with criminal charges uh and uh, you know the the pile of crap is building to say he needs to resign at first he said i'm never going to resign and everybody's oh he's not going to resign well they keep finding out more stuff and now the the call for res resignation is growing louder and louder here and if if he if he says he wants to run next year, the Republicans are going to start plotting uh, to recruit primary challengers uh, to ensure that uh, his his name is not on the ballot next year. Um, and that's what they're going to try to do. They're going to get a Republican to take his seat, but it ain't going to be. But they don't want George Santos winning that. Okay, uh, and I don't think he's going to win anyway because the people he represents in that district, uh, pretty much. 100% of them say they don't want him back. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's funny coming from Republican voters. I mean, it was okay for Trump, right? Trump can be the worst thing that came down the pike. Uh, and they'll keep voting for him. But here's George Santos, you know, equally much of a liar as Trump was. Okay. And yet, we don't like him. <laughs> and we don't want him back. You know. And all I could say is that maybe it's because, you know, uh, you we've seen George Santos uh, as a drag queen. Uh, <laughs> in places, and he and he's uh, not your what they consider a a straight man, as the Republicans would like. Uh, maybe that's the difference why they want him out and not Trump instead. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so they you know they they're not going to put up with with uh, with somebody like that and somebody that's lied to them repeatedly as he ran for the seat. Um. But it's, it's a very, you know, it has to be really difficult to be a Republican these days, to think the way they do, because, you know, you, you have to be hypocri hip hypocritical, you know. You can't be straight answer, yes or no. You can't, you can't. You always have to explain yourself because you said something different weeks ago than what you're saying now. You're always being asked, why did you say this? Now you're saying that. Have you ever noticed that whenever reporters do interview, uh, interviews with Republicans, that kind of a question will come up. Well, you said this back then. Why are you saying this now? It's because they're never consistent. They never keep a promise. They never keep their word. Okay? Uh, 
so you know these people it's like voters republican voters don't care they've been around these people so much that they think that's normal for politicians to lie to your face all right um, all they care about is that that politician says i'm against abortion and i'm for guns okay as long as those two things come out of their mouth uh that's okay that makes that makes up for everything that they lied about you know very strange voters they are okay that's it for today and i hope everybody has a, a great uh rest of the week and upcoming weekend so uh please keep your ears open to local covid 19 news um and uh subscribe and comment to my uh, blogs here I'd like to hear any questions you might have and please treat each other nice and uh, uh and try to understand that uh you know people are different they're not cookie cutter people we're not you know all the same and so different ideas different philosophies and different ways of living are out there and you're being asked to tolerate that uh, so they can tolerate you and if you tolerate each other enough you might learn to overlook that stuff over time and that won't bother you no more so try and do that and i'll talk to you guys later take care <laughs>